Hello and welcome to episode number 12 of Tradecraft Security Weekly. I'm your host, Bo Bullock. On this week's episode, I'm going to be talking about automating screenshots to quickly assess many web applications. Now, what I mean by that is basically we're going to take a list of URLs, uh, a large number of URLs, and we're going to, instead of uh, uh, manually navigating each one of them, we're going to use a tool to automatically go to each site, take a screenshot of it, put it in a list for us, so we can quickly go through that list and identify anything interesting. We'll talk about how to do that with a, with a few different tools here in a moment. First, I'm gonna talk about why that's actually something that's necessary. Um, so on a lot of assessments that we do, we're commonly faced with a scenario of having a very large attack surface. Um, you know, it, we definitely face organizations that have you know a very small scope of like 10 IPs or less, and that's very easy to manage, uh, very easy to just go and manually navigate. Um, but there are definitely organizations we test that have multiple slash 16s or, or even more um, and have you know IPs all over the world and have thousands and thousands of hosts. And you know if, if we do, let's say, a port scan on just common web ports across, the, across like a few different slash 16s for an organization, um, you know, depending on how well they utilize that IP space, it could just be a few IPs or they might do a really good job of filling up that space and have a ton of web servers out there. Um, you might run the port scan and find, you know, there's there's thousands of web servers um, in this slash 16 that you want to go assess. It would be really, really inefficient for us to take a web browser and manually go and try to navigate each one of those um, individually. That would just, it would take too much time. You have to, you know, copy paste the URL into the browser, go click go, wait for it to load, and then decide whether or not you want to do anything there. And then if you screenshot it, that takes another... You know, it just takes time to do it manually. Um, but there's a number of really good tools out there that will automate this whole thing for you. You give it a list, it'll go to each site, take a screenshot for you, it'll even um, uh, store the various header information you're getting back from them, put it in a nice report so you can basically just scroll through and look for anything interesting. Um, before we talk about the tools though, uh, let's talk about internal applications as well because this is some, this is this concept of, of basically screenshotting web applications is something that is very useful on the inside of a network as well. Um, as an attacker, you could you could use one of these tools to basically locate like internal web portals. Like let's say you wanted to look for an internal wiki or a SharePoint or various security appliances. You might find like an AV portal or a firewall portal. Um, you might find like a vSphere, uh, uh, you know, like a vCenter type of web server. So you know that there's like a vCenter server there. Um, you could look for outdated software. So, you know, you're just scrolling through the, the screenshots of all these internal apps and you see like, you know, an old Tomcat server that's sitting out there that you might be able to exploit. Um, system man management homepage this is a very common thing we see uh, quite a bit. Uh, the other thing too is looking for printers on the inside of a network because it's it's really rare like that I've ever uh, seen <laughs> anyone actually change the default passwords on printers on the inside of a network, um, and they can provide a an interesting foothold and pivot uh, with provided the right exploits for those printers. Um, network devices, same thing. Like there's been times where we find default creds for for network devices, uh, and you can you know change routes. Uh, chain, you know, add add various uh, different settings to switches. Um, definitely something to look for. Just you know, you could run an internal port scan on just web ports on a few different subnets on the internal network you have access to, and then run one of these tools to go and screenshot the web servers pretty quickly, and then find these kinds of things. Might provide an interesting uh, uh, pivot for you. So. Tools. Uh, there's a number of different tools out there. Um, here's five of them that I've uh, kind of put together here. Um, Eyewitness is probably the most popular by far. Um, it's one that I use very often. It's it's uh, very sturdy. It works really well. Um, it can be actually run from a Docker container, which is really cool. Uh, there's RAR that's out there that I've used a few different times as well. That's the, uh, the rep Rapid uh, Assessment of Web Resources tool. Um, that one actually will output to a searchable HTML format, and then they also have a threat matrix based off like the header information that comes back. That's kind of neat. Um, there's HTTP screenshot by Breen Machine, which I've used a few different times, which is really great too. Um, that one can brute force subdomains. Um, there's Peeping Tom by Tim Tomes, uh, Landmaster 53. That one is discontinued currently, but again, like I'm, I'm providing a number of these here because I have had various situations where. Um, for some reason or another, it didn't work, uh, and I just needed a different tool. So um, there's a number of them here. Lastly, uh, is the, a tool that I wrote called Power Webshot that is very much still in development. Um, there currently it, it works, but it has some issues with uh, sites that have invalid certificates um, or just cert, cert issues in general. So if you want to take a look at that and help out, I would be much appreciative. <laughs> but hey, if you don't want to, go grab my witness. It's awesome. Let's do an eyewitness demo. Okay, so I'm going to be uh, demoing the Docker version of Eyewitness. 
Um, the, the cool thing about the Docker version is it doesn't rely on any of the dependencies or you don't have to install any of the dependencies on the local host. You just have it all contained in the Docker container, which is really nice. Um, so if you go ahead and go install Docker, um, you just go grab um, eyewitness from GitHub and get in the, the eyewitness directory and then run this Docker build command here, which is on the GitHub repo itself. Um, to build the, the eyewitness container. Once you've got the container, you can then run uh, docker-run uh, command. I'm sorry, uh, not doc, not dash run, docker run, like this, docker run. Um, you're gonna give it dash dash rm dash it. Um, you need to give it a volume, so you give it the dash v. Uh, this is gonna be your local host volume, so lat slash root desktop. Um, in my case, I'm, I'm pointing it at a folder that I, I put on the desktop here for my results, the eyewitness dash results folder, mounting that to slash temp slash eyewitness. Um, and then if you run, at, at that point, basically run the eyewitness command, um, it will give you the, the options that, that you could use. So the kind of to, to help verify that it's actually working as a Docker container, that's how I can test it. Um, next, we're gonna give it uh, the rest of the flags we need to actually do something interesting. Um, so. First off, we're gonna give uh, eyewitness-f for the uh, the file list um, or the, of, of URLs that we're gonna test, which in, in this case does have to actually be in the, the volume that you mounted. So in this case, it does have to be in this directory that I, I have here, the slash root desktop eyewitness results, so, which I, I do have it there. It's a little little confusing because it you know the, when you're pointing it at, at the file, um, it's actually pointing to the mounted location, which in this case is actually a temp eyewitness, which is mount is the actual local mount to the Docker container. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna actually be running against a file that I created that has 30 different websites, very common, popular websites. I'm gonna run it in headless mode uh, with dash dash headless, and then give it five threads with dash dash threads five and a, uh, a timeout of 20 seconds. So let's go ahead and run that. Now, this will take a minute or so to run, so I'll probably just fast forward the video here until we're done. All right, that finished up. Let's go ahead and take a look at the output. So in my eyewitness-results folder, you'll see that we have a results folder in, inside that folder. And inside the folder, you'll find a few different files. Um, you'll find that the screenshots are actually in a folder called screens. Um, but if you open up this report.html file, this is the report that I was talking about that uh, that Eyewitness put together that will actually um, show all the different servers that we just screenshotted. And here we go. So uh, if we scroll down a little bit, um, up here at the top, it will actually try a bit to categorize some of the sites. So it tries to find various you know, CMSs and that kind of stuff. Um, in our case, I just, I, I, I screenshotted a bunch of various uncategorized websites. So um, you don't really get to see that kind of thing here, but um, you can see like, all right, so I did Adobe.com, there's a screenshot of it, there's Amazon.com. Um, you can see how this would be useful as a pen tester. If you've got thousands of web apps, you can just literally scroll through um, and, and try to identify something that you might find interesting, like a login portal. And in addition, the thing that's cool is that you have the header information that came from each site as well. So you can kind of search through that, see if you see anything interesting there. You also have the source code um, available as well. So you can click the source code link there and take a look at the source code if you want. Um, but again, like um, this this makes it very, uh, very much more efficient in terms of looking through various websites. Like if we have, you know, a thousand websites we want to look at real quick, we can all just go through a list of screenshots and try to identify something interesting, especially given, um, you know, limited amount of time. Like a lot of times, you know, when we're, we're doing a pen test, like we don't have forever to to spend on manually visiting every single site. We have maybe like a week or two. And in order to, to, to be most efficient and find things quickly, we have to actually do some automation. And that's, that's eyewitness for you. And that is it for this edition of Tradecraft Security Weekly. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, go and watch all the other shows from Security Weekly as well. There's a ton of other really awesome shows on the Security Weekly network. Um, you can find me on Twitter at DapTac. Thank you guys so much for watching um, and have a great, great week.